Uh, Haled Haim, Senior Advisor of Presidential Council of Libya, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. It's, it's for me, uh, as a journalist, uh, I, I don't know if uh, I am not uh, in the right way, a, a pleasure to have a, a, a representative of uh, Libya because everything's happened in Libya. Or if we can say that Libya is going up Oh, overcoming the the, the 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 situation. Well, welcome yes, to w welcome much. to um, this to this forum because this is my second time to participate here as a economist, as a politician, as academic, mm -hmm. and also as Pan Africanist. Because since my youth, I was very much connected to Africa through youth organizations, student organization. Even when I studied in UK, I was very much involved with the African African diaspora organization in UK and uh, in the West in general. Uh, so which is your opinion about th this summit, uh, Africa, Spain, business summit? Yeah, uh, you, you, you can second participation. You, you can year, say. Here. Yes. This is good opportunity, but uh, really I was uh, hoping that we see more Spanish in this forum, more people from uh, private sector, from the government sector, from academia as well, from universities, from think tanks because dealing with Africa is a huge subject. Africa is the mother of all resources and the mother of all opportunities. So you know that a lot of people around the world, they are going to Africa. Most of them, they are opportunistic. They want to generate money and they work away. One of the, uh, the painful things about what those people doing in Africa is spoiling our soil and eating the money of Africa. They are not doing anything for Africans. S Spain, didn't ha doesn't have the his bad history with Africa. And also there is a positive uh, factor, which is the geographical proximity and also the connectivity with Morocco, Algeria, Libya, Egypt, Tunisia, s because of the history with some other African countries on the uh, Western coast of, uh, of Africa. So if you uh, capitalize on that, I'm sure that Spain can do a lot. So it's very easy. You can help Africa as I said, because of political arrest, because of state fragility, because of corruption, you can, be, you can be very cautious by employing local staff. A lot of Europeans and Americans, they employ local staff. They supervising the work, they investing some money with the locals, with the banks. There are a lot of foreign banks and African banks. Libya, one of those countries doing enter Africa uh, investment in different sectors, banking, agriculture, uh, tourism, uh, agro-processing, agro-processing, oil as well. We have oil Libya companies, uh, big companies, especially in East Africa. So I think Spain has to move on that. As I said, for the uh, language barrier and cultural barrier, you can invest some money on teaching Africans Spanish language. Did you know British Council doing a lot in Africa, especially now the cost is, is cheaper than before. You can do it virtually uh, with the very uh, few number of people around Africa teaching Spanish, plus employing their virtual uh, means to teach language. Also, uh, creating some joint ventures. You have, I think, two banks here in Spain. They work on that. Plus, you have Repsol. Now, any, gas, any, any oil and gas, now they have an initiative in Africa for 20 years. So Repsil can do the same. Other companies, Sipsa or other oil companies, they can do invest some money from their social responsibility funds. So that will generate a lot of opportunity to uh, Spanish SMEs, Spanish uh, corporates, Spanish government agencies as well. I think the opportunities, the, the stake is very high in Africa. I think the only place can help with minimizing and keeping the prices of food low is Africa. It's through the food security programs and also through the uh, manufacturers. Of course, the, uh, the, the problem, there are problems, inherited problems, for, for example, skills gap, technology gap, lack of funds sometimes, state fragility, corruption, political arrest. But a lot of people, they're doing business in Africa now. If you go to any African, uh, country now, you see a lot of foreigners from India, from China, from 
Europe. We, we have to, to change our, our mentality. You said in your intervention, it's not charity, it's investment, our, yeah. our business. We must change, change our mentality it. and, and uh, have the, the, uh, the conscience that the stability and progress of Africa is the stability and progress of Europe and, and the world. Yes, of course. I mean, the only thing can prevent famine in the world is Africa because of the food security there. It's the, I mean, the resources, the land, the soil, the water, the climate, and also there is an opportunity to, to mitigate the climate change uh, effects. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know why your government has, has to do some work on that, plus the businesses as well. It's, it's, it's not a rocket science, it's very easy. You go there, approach people, and employ local staff. Not If you go to Nigeria, you can employ people from Egypt, from Cote d'Ivoire, because in Africa, it's easy for people to, to communicate with locals there and with government, and prevent a lot of uh, chances for corruption. I mean, when you employ local people. And also, partnership is possible. I mean, there are banks, foreign banks, and African banks, and local ba national banks. They are ready to invest. They have a lot of money, and you can see and study those joint projects with some uh, European and American, Chinese and Indians. They do a lot of projects financed and funded by banks, either African banks or foreign banks or in partnership. So I think the equation is, is not complicated, but you, you have to have the gut, the motive, I mean, to, to take the first step. Really, uh, Spain has a lot of, I mean, potential to play a role in Africa. I mean, one of the things uh, I wanted to talk about, export push. This is what Africa needs. When we do manufacture in Africa, so we take products, finished products, or half-finished products, or unfinished products, we need markets for that. Spain, because of it's a, it's a, a coastal country, and they have the, the capability for I mean, exporting and re-exporting, that's another, another opportunity for Spain. So it's easy. I mean, uh, we are, as Africans, we can help. Because I, mean, I deal with the economy not as a trader or as an investor, but I mean, I have the interest to help my mother continent, my country as well. So we are ready to help. Maybe if you can have a, a small think tank they can really uh, formulate policy of Spain on that matter of uh, investment in Africa. Immigration, which creating a, a very, very big problem in, in Europe problem with the elections, problem. but of course uh, the people of uh, from African countries, especially it, for Libya, of Libya, it, it better is that people can stay at their yeah. homes because they have jobs, they have a good uh, horizon, good life. Sure. Because in That's Europe now want, it's actually, a problem, yeah. especially in Libya. You know, some European friends, they want Libya to play the role of a police to stop those Africans who are crossing the, crossing the Sahara. Most of them, they die because of the hunger, because of the trust. So they want Libya to, to play the role of police. Libya, I think, as a Libyans, I mean, we cannot play that role. Since Libya was under occupation, was under colony for years. So we cannot play that role, but we can play the role of a mediator, play a role as a, uh, an actor to help Europeans to invest in Africa instead of pushing people because of lack of jobs, because of poverty, because of uh, political arrest, they, they, flood, they flee to Europe. Why we push them to flee to Europe and create problems here and social arrest here, political arrest as well, and also the demo demographic problem in Europe, economic problem. So it's better to keep them there. In 2010, I was there at that time in charge of foreign, foreign affairs of my country when we had the uh, summit, third summit between African Union and European Union. We told our European friends that go and invest, start with five billion US dollars or euros, invest in Africa, create projects for locals, for, uh, help government to, to, to create policies, how to deal with poverty and lack of jobs. So no, they said no. Instead, they opted for charity work. They want to play the role of donors instead of being partner to Africa. Now we see people dying in the Mediterranean, dying in, uh, in uh, Great Sahara, and then they facing problem in Europe, as you said, an election. Now the, uh, 
the right wing, they are making, uh, I mean, uh, more popularity. And for Africans, it's not in our favor. It's not in our interest. Because what, I, what we so call it, drain, uh, I mean, brain drain. We educate people. We spend money on them. We train them. And then they flee to Europe. Why? We need them to stay in, in, in Africa to be part of the development process of the economic transformation of industrialization. That's you can help with the minimum uh, contribution. You can help with that, especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Fit some money for three, four, five years through the, uh, your businesses, through big corporate like Ripsol, Eni, uh, Total, and those big, huge companies who, who are really making a huge profit f out of Africa in gas and oil and other sectors. So go and invest in local, in local communities. So you keep people there. I mean, help them, encourage them to stay. They want to stay with their family. They don't want to take risk by fleeing their countries. And th most of them, they are really dying in sub-Saharan Africa. They die in the Mediterranean or being imprisoned. Why? And then uh, those who manage to, leave, uh, to, to reach Europe, then they face other problem, which is integration. Integration issue is another issue. And also create economic problem here, political problem, integration problem. Social social problem, a demographic problem. So this is my call, my appeal to our European friends. Please go and invest in, in Africa. That's a debt you pay back and you protect your communities as well. It's not only paying the debt because of slavery, because of colonialism, not only that. And also you protect your social cohesion. Countries like Libya, Morocco, Algeria, I'm sure that they will help and Egypt, those who they have better uh, economic situation. Okay. Really, they can help with that. Okay. Instead of asking us to play the role of a police, we cannot play that. As a Libyan, we will fight against that. Even our government, if decide to play that role, I'm sure that most of the Libyans, they wouldn't accept that. Mm -hmm. Khaled Chaim, thank you for joining us. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, pleased to be here. Mm -hmm. And I hope that next forum will be wider and bigger. So we have more Spanish companies and uh, from think tanks, from universities, from government agencies, and as well uh, we have to invite people from East Africa and South Africa because what w I have seen today is more or less from Western Africa. Thank you very Thank much. You.